Welcome to our celebration of the Nativity of our Lord. Our opening hymn is number 92. Please join me, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 92. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good afternoon. Amen. This afternoon we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. The prayers will be coming for the Vigil Mass, but the readings will be for the Mass at midnight. I guess I just as sort of a precursor because I'll be celebrating the Mass at midnight. And I sort of like a parish that has a midnight Mass at midnight. Not at 10 o'clock, not at 11 o'clock, but actually at midnight. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these <laughs> sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus Christ, His only begotten 
O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait and hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelled in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, in the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful, from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. is 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to the God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Isaiah, today's first reading, is prophesying of a child to be born some 700 plus years later who will be called Wonder Counselor, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. Isaiah goes on to say that this child's dominion is vast and forever peaceful. Boy, we should sure could use peace in our world today. Despite all the technological, medical advances that have taken place in the last century, not to mention in the past two millennia since the birth of Christ, we lack peace on earth. A handful of examples. In Charlottesville, back in August of 2017, a car attack occurred while a white supremacist drove his car into a crowd of people protesting the white rally that was taking place in Charlottesville. 35 people were injured and a young woman killed. Then in August of 20, a year later, there's a young teenager who worked at a theme park, Sesame Street theme park in Pennsylvania. He was advising people that they needed to wear a mask. It was a requirement to go into the theme park. And there was this, these adults, this man, that took offense at this young teenage employee and sucker punched him, knocking him out. Earlier this month, a Minnesota grocery delivery driver dropped off some groceries for an elderly couple. She happened to notice that there was a pro-police sign in their front yard. She got so upset, she ended up driving over and crushing the groceries. Then I saw in Tuesday's paper a photo of a woman holding a crucifix, protesting a new mask mandate of the Boston mayor, Michelle Wu. It made front page on the Herald, the Boston Herald, and in the front section of the Boston Globe. I cringed when I saw the photo. See, Jesus came to show us who his eternal father is, a God of mercy, a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of peace. In Isaiah, he prophesies that the child who will be born will smash the yoke that burdens the Israelite people. How fitting, because in Jesus's, Jesus quotes in Matthew's gospel, it's a gospel passage that I, when I was doing my hospital ministry at the five hospitals in the South region, anointing people that a lot of them that were dying or seriously ill. With all the sacraments, you read a, a, some section of the gospel as part of providing that sacrament to that individual, that, that, that faith-filled parishioner. And, and it was Matthew's gospel. And it's there Jesus invites the listeners to take his yoke upon their shoulders when he says, come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble of heart. What a beautiful invitation. Jesus does not promise us happiness in this world. Happiness is fleeting, but if you trust Jesus with an open and humble heart, he will bestow peace within you, despite all the anxieties, conflicts, animosity, and even hatred in the world today. We need to focus on what we can change and not what we cannot change. First priority is to focus on our relationship with God. And then after that, everything can fall into place. With our family, friends, loved ones, and people that we encounter on our way. There's a passage in Psalm 73 that truly resonates with me. I'd see it occasionally when I would be praying the office of the liturgy. It goes on to say, so they wear their pride like a necklace, they clothe themselves with violence, their hearts overflow with malice, their minds seethe with plots. Pride is our downfall, just as it was for our first parents, Adam and Eve. Pride is the, is the root of all evil and the beginning of sin. Humility is the antidote to the, to the sin of pride. If we're prideful, thinking that we are the created and not think that thinking that we are the creator and not the created, 
We get stiff-necked. We don't listen to what Jesus is trying to tell us. And we can't join Jesus in his yoke because it makes no sense. It's still his yoke, and it only works for the two that are joined together that go in the same direction. They can't pull off in different sections. As I said, humility is the antidote to the sin of pride. There's this beautiful passage in Paul's letter to the Philippians also that I see in the office of the readings that really resonated with me as well. It said, maintain your unanimity, possessing the one love, united in spirit and ideals. Never act out of rivalry or conceit. Rather, let all parties think humbly of others as superior to themselves. Wow, that's a tough task. That's a tough ask to do. To think humbly of others as superior to themselves. Then it goes on to say, each of you looking to the other's interests rather than his own. If you can take to heart this passage, you are saying yes to joining Jesus in his yoke. And as you gather this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with family, friends, and loved ones, and as you're trying on those wonderful new Christmas sweaters, shirts, coats, hats, meditate on this passage from Paul's letter to Colossians. Some of you, you, as I would call you, fondly call you, usual suspects that are here for Mass, daily Mass, and on the weekend, I quote this often, but it's so important, especially as we're going into winter, it's getting a little bit chillier. Paul's letter to the Colossians says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Boy, there's another thing that we don't have a lot of these days is, is patience. Then he goes on to say, these are some of the tougher ones. Patient is tough, but then also bearing with one another. What does that mean? Okay, you know, just tolerate. Maybe you've got a, maybe you've got a cousin that you just don't really get along with, your oil and water. Just play nice. Play nice. And then also forgiving one another. Even when we know that we were wronged, might have been intentionally or intentionally, forgive the person. Forgive the person. And then he finishes up, and it makes so much sense. It's so difficult to be patient, to bear one another, to forgive one another, unless you, above all, put on love. With love, all things are possible. Just as all things are possible with God, all things are possible with love. I'm going to finish up with a story about my wife. Some of you... Uh, Many of you know that I was married. I was married for 20 years. My wife passed away. It was uh, four, uh, four days ago, 22 years ago, that she passed away. Her parents had died. Both of them had died before we got married. So inevitably on the Christmas weekends, although we had spent some time with her sisters, usually Christmas, early Christmas afternoon, late morning, afternoon, we would end up at my parents' place in Dover, both on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. And as at the end of the day, and we were at, at night, and we we're leaving Dover to go back to Braintree, we're driving along, and all of a sudden there's this clearing, long driveway. Don't even see the house. It's set behind a bunch of trees, set way back. But in that field, in that clearing, there's a small pine tree. Maybe it's a yew tree. It's, it was probably about I'm not a very good judge of distance, probably about 80 yards from the road. It was the only tree that was there in the entire clearing, the field. And it had white lights on it, and it was lit up. And my wife would say, let's pull over. And we'd sit there for five minutes or so, just looking at the lights, almost wanting to sing Silent Night, seeing those lights. It helped to slow us down figure out what was important to allow peace to enter into our hearts, into our lives, and knowing what was truly important. So that is my wish for you, that as you spend your time, your, love, your time with your loving friends and families during this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and throughout the holiday season, I wish you 
peace. Maybe not peace a lot with as, as the little ones are pulling together, uh, pulling apart all the wonderful gifts that Santa brings them. But inner peace that you have that you can take with you throughout this holiday season and into the new year. Merry Christmas. Please stand for our profession of faith. And then afterwards, we will have the prayer of the faithful, rather the prayers and petitions. And the final uh, prayer by the priest will not be said, but instead there will be a blessing on the nativity scene, the Christmas manger. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And, on, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Celebrating the glad tidings of this day, we now reach out to God with our prayers. For the priests who make it possible for us to celebrate our Catholic faith, we also remember in a special way our priests of the Archdiocese of Boston who have gone home to the Lord this past year. May our good and loving God grant them an eternal resting place in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in poverty, may our Savior and King, born in a stable, raise them up through faith to share in the riches of the kingdom we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faith community who mourn or suffer loneliness, may they find the joy of Christmas through the generosity extended by others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, may they rest in his eternal peace, especially Arthur Viennes, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. They remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 91. Hark the herald angels sing, number 91. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you may manifest the beginnings of our redemption to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we might be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are visiting, we will be coming up for communion in the center aisle and receiving it. And when you, to place your palm out flat, and no please fly traps. Pause a second before you close your hand so I can remove my hand because if I touch somebody's hand, if I touch somebody's hand, then I have to stop and purify my hands. So. If possible, for those that can, if not, I'll try to gently place it within your hand. And for those that are not disposed to predisposed to receiving communion, if you'd like to come forward for a blessing, you may do so by crossing your arms like so. Thank you. Our communion hymn is number 77, Silent Night. Number 77.
we will also sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 87.
us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw near new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. There are no announcements for me to make, but I, so therefore I'm going to make up some of my own stuff here. <laughs> I was asked, uh, in the bulletin, there's a list of loved ones in whose memory Christmas flowers were donated, and you will find them in the, in the bulletin, uh, in the, in the insert in the bulletin. But there were some folks that uh, did not make it in time to be entered into the bulletin, the insert, so I'd just like to just ref read their names so that you can keep them in prayers. Thomas and Teresa Burke, Tom, Dick, Terry, and Gerald Burke, Peggy, Joe Burke, Margaret and Chester Noss, Margaret and Woodrow Goodwin, Louise, Todd Goodwin, Joseph and Santa DeMeo, Ethel and Frederick Robbins. That's what I read here, Santa DeMeo, DeMatteo. <laughs> and Ethel and Frederick Robbins. So if you would keep them in your prayers as well as those that are listed in the insert. Just have a little Christmas story to share with you, it's with my wife. Um, there was one Christmas, we were opening up gifts, and I turned to Claire after I opened up this nice dress shirt. And I looked at her and I said, Claire, did you give me the shirt last year? And she looked at me with a little bit of disgust, saying, I've given this, that to you for the last three years. <laughs> That's what happens when I end up taking the shirts and I don't open up and take the tags off. I put them in my drawer to break in case of an emergency. <laughs> so trying to be better at this, I actually donned on a new cleric shirt that was still wrapped, still purchased, that I hadn't used before. So in honor of Claire, I opened it up before this afternoon's mass. I'm trying, Claire, I'm trying. And I wanna wish, I wanna wish you all a very blessed filled and Merry Christmas and a, and a joyous, and I'll be seeing a lot of you beforehand, but a, lot, a joyous, happy, and above all, a healthy new year. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. And our closing hymn, please join me, number 80, Joy to the World. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, and to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruins of souls. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And now we will sing our closing hymn, number 80, Joy to the World. Please join us.